Hi there team, welcome to another update on the geologic unrest on Iceland's Reykjanes Peninsula. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Saturday, December 27th. Uh, there's a new Met Office update that came out just before the holidays. So I thought I'd throw together another update for you, just get you caught up on the latest data and things going on in Iceland. So looking out there across the Sunnukur crater, you can see this the continued degassing and cooling of these older lava flows, the last of which erupted on April 1st, or excuse me, July 16th. That was our last event. Um, looking over at, uh, well, now the, the view's all gone, but clouds came in a few minutes ago, but you can see the view out over Grindavik there with the defensive berms around it. And let's get right to that, the most recent Met Office update that came out again on the 23rd. Um, so basically the situation's the same. Magma's still accumulating. Uh, it's definitely slowed this past few months over what we've seen previously. So the influx rate of magma into that subsurface storage uh, system is definitely lower than it was you know, at this point last year or even earlier in the year. Uh, but while we're continuing to accumulate magma, that still would point towards some sort of event, possibly an eruption uh, happening at some point. Uh, the most interesting thing here, I suppose, with the Met Office update is the, the modeling of how much magma has accumulated. Looks like we have about 18 million cubic meters of magma that ha has accumulated since our last event in July, on July 16th. You can see where that stacks up based compared to some of the other uh, eruptive events that have occurred in this area. So I guess we're maybe like uh, fifth highest so far in terms of total magma volume that's been stored in the subsurface. Um, seismic activity is still quite low. We'll look at that here in a second. And they've kept the hazard level basically the same. So a pretty brief update from the Met Office, not a whole lot to report there. Getting to those earthquakes here, um, you can see <clears throat> over the past 24 hours, just a few near Grindavik, many of them quite small, low, negative magnitude quakes. This one here was 0.74, um, but just kind of scattered across the region, you know, just one earthquake, isolated earthquake here or there. Uh, the more interesting thing, I suppose, happening the last 24 hours was we have a, a main shock aftershock sequence. So the main shock here was this 3.1. It occurred near underneath uh, Lake Klevravat. Um, you can see the depth there, the magnitude, and then you can see all of these smaller aftershocks that occurred after that main quake there. So we've got the main shock and then maybe, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 or so smaller aftershocks that have come in after with that. But again, just to reiterate, uh, we have no evidence in this area that these quakes and the seismic activity we have here is related to magma movement. There's no evidence of that. Uh, at this time. And um, that's been the theme throughout the whole year. So when you see earthquakes in Iceland, don't get too excited. Earthquakes are quite common. Eruptions are sometimes more of the exception. So uh, we see a lot more earthquakes, many, many more times earthquakes than we do volcanic activities. A few offshore earthquakes here as well. Looking at earthquakes over the past week, uh, focusing on the area where we expect the eruption to be, you just see, again, those two quakes over the past week, two quakes near Grindavik. Uh, and then there's that sequence I just talked about here with that magnitude 3.1. And then all these red dots would be the, the aftershocks associated with that. Looks like a few days ago, there was a slightly bigger one there, 2.5 as well. But again, this is kind of business as usual. If you've been watching these updates with me, this area seems sees quite a bit of seismic activity. Uh, and that's kind of its sort of background level. Um, looking at the past month, I thought this would be interesting. Uh, you can see, <clears throat> I mean, this is just a nice snapshot into seismic levels across the peninsula. You know, more earthquakes in the offshore region, uh, the Lake Krevravat region, and then scattered quakes around um, the Fagradalsfjall area and around Grindavik and where we've seen these last few eruptions. This is sort of the typical pattern uh, that we see over long periods. Um, Let's see, so GPS data, so that's another thing we're tracking along with the earthquakes, but until we see some you know, market change in the earthquakes ticking up a little bit, uh, an eruption is still out there waiting in the wings, I suppose. Uh, that's not the one I wanted. Let's find, go to this one. Let's go to a different GPS station and just look at the last, <clears throat> this is actually gonna show the last year, so this is just a nice 
overview. So you can see January, uh, the uplift data, GPS station moving upwards, leading to the April 1st event, which was mainly an intrusion with a little bit of an eruption. And then quick uh, magma accumulation causing uplift throughout the summer, spring and summer, leading to the July 16th event. And then you can kind of see where we've been since then. So you can see the, the, the slope of this trajectory of points here much less steep than what we've seen previously and now we're kind of way out here well above the threshold we've seen for these previous eruptions but still with just you know with less magma accumulating it sort of leaves more uncertainty i think in terms of when the next event will be because there's less magma and, and gas pressure moving its way uh, into the system so the gps data seems to track pretty nicely with um everything we've seen up to this point what we've seen previously over the past few months with this thing remember i mean another good sign that the whole thing is slowing down is remember in 2024 we had six eruptions so we had january 14th february 8th march 16th may 29th august 22nd and november 20th and this year 2025 we only had two and april 1st was like the weakest eruption mostly it was an intrusion so we've had one and then i guess a small second eruption this calendar year so another sign that things seem to be slowing down on this area here on the Reykjanes peninsula in iceland last thing i'll leave you with here is uh our good friend and viewer bruce garner sent me uh, his latest graphs that he's worked on to kind of estimate and project when we might see uh, the next events so let me plug those in here for you so here's what Bruce is doing basically is taking three stations um, shown up here in each color, blue, red, and yellow, and then plotting their the uplift data for those three GPS stations. And then he's basically used some sort of modeling and calculations to just estimate with each eruptive event, you know, we see that the uplift is higher than the previous one. And he's worked out the percentages there or the math on that, and then he projects that for the next event. So you can see, here's the um, April 1st event of this year, here's the July 16th event, and then all these lines here, up and down movement of the GPS station, but the overall trend is upward. So he puts a best fit line through that data, shown by these straight lines in red, blue, and yellow. And then his projected level or threshold needed to trigger the next eruption, shown by these horizontal lines here. So where the red line, the red sloped line intersects the red horizontal line, you can drop down and get a rough estimate on the date. And same thing with the blue and the yellow. Um, interesting thing with the red, with the Svartsingi, um GPS station, is his modeled forecast there has it as today, the 27th. But when you look at the other two stations, they're out here like around January 7th or 11th. So it's a few weeks away when you look at that data. So interesting analysis, obviously, you know, time will tell, um, could happen anytime, but what we'd expect to see is some measure of warning is most likely uh, a flurry of earthquakes over a few minutes, maybe hours leading up to the eruption. Uh, the borehole changes around the Svartsingi power plant have been known to be fairly reliable indicators of something happening as well. So those are the types of signs we're looking for. I'll try to keep you updated as best I can. I do leave for Hawaii here on January 2nd. Uh, a good chance that with the group I'm leading on a field trip there, we might catch the next eruptive episode out there, episode 40. And I'll try to share that with you as best I can uh, from that location. So hope you have a great New Year's and uh, we'll catch you later. Take care, friends.